Hello, in this video, we are going to introduce the wild, wild world of special relativity. Um, okay, if uh, this becomes painful, you can blame this guy, one Albert Einstein. Um, okay, but we're going to start talking about how relativity works when you get close to the speed of light because it's uh, bananas. So let's get into it. Okay. Relativity, when it comes down to it, all becomes about the speed of light. There's one crazy rule about the speed of light that kind of breaks everything. And it was really first developed by Maxwell, who is a very famous physicist, did a lot of work with electricity and magnetism. Um, there's a famous set of equations, Maxwell's equations, that we don't really do in IB physics. Um, we do a few of them in a roundabout way, but anyway, Maxwell did a lot to describe how light works, which is a form of electric, which is electromagnetic radiation. Um, and did some math and came up with the basically rules that say how how light propagates. And the really really wild thing mathematically that came out of Maxwell's work was that it showed that the speed of light in a vacuum should be constant and independent of reference frame, meaning the math said. To anybody, anywhere, in any reference frame, light should travel at the speed of light, always. Which might sound simple, but when you think about multiple reference frames, it gets crazy. So, uh, the speed of light in a vacuum is a number in your data booklet. Um, you will know it very well, we're going to use it all the time, but it's 300 million meters per second. Light is like super fast. Okay, 300 million meters per second, 3 times 10 to the 8. Um, and it's the same in any and all reference frames. So keep that in your head because it's going to be crazy. So the, the trick is that means any observer in any reference frame always measures light to be moving that fast regardless of whether reference frames are moving relative to each other. That's what the math said, which was crazy and weird. And Einstein took that idea and said, well, if that's true, then things are going to get really, really wonky. And here's how. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Light always moves at the speed of light, no matter who's looking at it, which makes things nuts. Okay, so Einstein takes that one idea and basically says, here's what should happen with like relativity then, because um, it's funky. But there are two postulates, two basic like foundational rules at the heart of special relativity, which is relativity when we start dealing with things moving really fast and with light. Um, one is that still, the laws of physics should be the same in all inertial frames of reference. So regardless of how weird things get, if I'm on a spaceship moving really, really fast and somebody's on the ground, um, you know, not moving relative to me and my spaceship, we should agree on the laws of physics. We should be able to use the same equations and get the same answers. Well, if we use the Galilean relativity uh, equations that wouldn't necessarily work if we're moving really fast and we'll get into why okay but this is like a um you know a foundational almost philosophical principle if you will that the laws of physics have to be the same in all inertial frames of reference and the speed of light is constant um those are the two postulates of relativity those are the two again like foundational rules that everything else comes out of and so you do need to know those. They will often ask you to state the two postulates of special relativity. That's why this is in green here, because you want to know it and memorize it. So those are the two, the two rules. Laws of physics are the same everywhere in inertial frames. And the speed of light is constant for all inertial reference frames. Okay. Let's get into why that's a problem. What's happening here? Okay. You are, there's two astronauts, one shining a flashlight, one flying a spaceship really fast. Um, we would expect with our like regular relativity rules, okay, this person's shining a flashlight, this person, so the light is traveling away from the flashlight at 300 million meters per second, yeah? This person is flying towards the light. So just like if this person threw a baseball and you're going towards it, the baseball would appear to be coming at you faster, right? So you would think that this person, this astronaut, would measure the light coming at four times 10 to the eight meters per second. But... That's not like what the rules that Maxwell came up with said, that they should be the same for both people. Both of these astronauts would measure that light to be traveling three times 10 to eight meters per second. How could that possibly be the case? Well, maybe they're going to measure like different distances or something. All right, it gets, uh, it gets very crazy. 
but they will both measure that and they will actually both measure that we can do experiments and see this happens um moving at 300 million meters per second here's a fun one let's say you have a very fast train moving four fifths the speed of light and the train is in between two trees that simultaneously get struck by lightning why not Okay, well, simultaneously, I say, but that uh, turns out going to be a very loose term. So if you're a person on the ground, right in between, you would certainly think that those two lightning strikes hit the trees simultaneously because the light hits the tree, and the idea is you to see that the like light from the event takes some time to reach you, right? So you'll see that image come to you at the speed of light. Same deal over here. You'll see that come to you at the speed of light. So take this distance divided by 300 million. That's how long it takes you to see this happen and this happened. So you would see both of those things definitely happen at the same time. But to a person on the train, that would not be the case because the light takes some time to travel here and the light takes some time to travel here. But the person is moving forward. This person will see this lightning strike before this lightning strike and will not agree that they're simultaneous events. This person will measure and be correct in saying that in my frame of reference, the lightning physically hit tree B before it hit tree A. All right? So they see these. So even the idea of simultaneity, two things happening at the same time, is a relative idea. It's not an absolute thing. So lots of our basic assumptions about time and space are about to be thrown out the window. So be ready to be a little flexible and creative in your thinking because it's going to get nuts. Okay, so how could this be true? Am I lying to you? No, we've done some experiments. Uh, one famous one was an interferometer experiment, which uh, uses light to kind of measure distances. The hope was that there was some kind of medium that light travels through, but uh, they did not find one. And they did find, because they could measure the speed of light, and they kind of like moved the thing side to side. They rotated the thing in all kinds of ways that with Galilean relativity, the light should be going like, you know, relatively faster in one direction, relatively slower in one direction. They should have been like speeding up and slowing down the light, just like you can a baseball when you throw it out the window of a car. But this was an early experiment that did find the speed of light is always the same in all directions, no matter whether there's relative movement, rotation of the device, all that kind of stuff. A more recent one um, is CERN, the uh, Large Hadron Collider. They took particles, and you can use these particle accelerators to make little particles go very, very fast, really close to the speed of light. So they had these, uh, they're called pion particles, and they went this fast. So C is the speed of light. You're going to see stuff like this all the time, decimals in front of a C. That's, you know, 99.975% the speed of light. So very, very, very close to the speed of light um, relative to the lab. We always got to do these measurements relative to other stuff, right? And then they emitted a burst of light. So these things are going really fast and they, you know, shoot off some light. So again, with Galilean, you would expect that the light would be measured to be moving relative to the lab at like almost two times the speed of light, 1.9975 times the speed of light. But it wasn't. It was C. It was measured to be C, not 1.999 or not the difference, right? If it's moving backwards, even if it's coming off backwards, it moves at the speed of light. Okay, so we have measured that this is true. The speed of light is constant no matter who you are and where you are. Okay. <clears throat> Can you go faster than light? No, you can't. It's impossible. There's another kind of rule of relativity that uh, we might get into a little bit more as we go of where this comes from. But if anything has mass, it cannot go at the speed of light. Um, and here's here's a fun... A uh, little graph to think about. Here's what happens as we add, because we've tried. We take these little particles and we give them more and more and more energy. We say, come on, come on, go faster, go faster. We can get, get these things up to, you know, 99.9% the speed of light. But no matter how much energy we give them, they will not hit the speed of light. This also comes out of a lot of Einstein's equations. We don't get super into this part necessarily. But here's here's an idea to think about. You keep adding energy to these particles. They keep going faster and faster and faster, but there's some like asymptote here. Yeah, I add way more energy and it just gets a little bit faster. So where is all that energy going? Think about the equation for kinetic energy. This is something really, really crazy about like mass. All right, 
So uh, I'll let you I'll let you noodle on that. Okay, let's um, break this down with some super simple um, quote problems. Uh, all right, so if you're flying this spaceship half the speed of light relative to the Earth, away from the Earth, you shine a laser beam out of the front window. How fast does the light travel relative to you? Think about it. What do you think based on what we just said? What is the answer? The answer is C. It's uh, the speed of light, which is C, which is, you know, 300 million meters per second. Okay, that's the speed of light. So relative to you, shine a light out the window. You see it going forwards uh, three times at the eight meters per second. Now, you're flying past the Earth at half the speed of light. Um, so to somebody on the Earth who sees you and your spaceship sending off light at C, and you're moving at 0.5 C, how fast did they see this light moving? Go ahead, what do you think? It's C, the answer is C, because to anybody, it's going at 300 million meters per second. What the heck? How? What? 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 What does that mean? What happens to the spaceship? Um, well, like it... There's length contraction or some crazy thing. All right, we'll get into it, but uh, it's it's uh, it's a whole thing. Okay. Oh, oops. All right, now let's do one more thing. Um, if you're flying in a spaceship at 80% the speed of light uh, and you throw a tennis ball, like you're really strong, so you throw the tennis ball at 30% the speed of light, how fast should it be going if we use our Galilean relativity equations? Well, if I use these, I would use my velocity addition equation, u prime equals u minus v. Um, so this would be v, right? The speed of the ship relative to the Earth. This would be u prime, because that's a speed on the ship which is moving. We're gonna call the ship uh, s prime, and we're gonna call this the Earth. Earth. <laughs> Okay, so I want to find the speed relative to the Earth, which means I want to find U, right? The speed in my kind of stationary frame. So we're going to do U equals U prime plus V. And so it would be the 0.3C that we throw the ball at plus the 0.8C that the thing is moving at. I get an answer of 1.1C, 1.1 times the speed of light. Well, that I just said, Einstein said, don't blame me, Einstein uh, and Maxwell said, that can't be, that can't work. So what does that mean? This equation I just taught you, we had so much fun with, it's, uh, it's bogus, it doesn't work. All right, at least here, it does work very, very well for like a ball in a train and things moving slowly. But when things move fast, things get more complicated and very weird. So um, that is plenty <clears throat> of crazy ideas for you to think about. It really is, uh, relativity is very wild and it takes a lot of thought and thinking and digestion. So I'm going to leave you to go digest that, think about it, let it uh, keep you up at night, and next time we will talk about how to adjust these equations to account for all of this craziness. All right, see you next time.